Okay. I'm here with David S. Galland, showing off I Get This Call Every Day. Do you want to tell the audience what I Get This Call Every Day about? So, I, storied history of this game. A storied history. I Get This Call Every Day, it's, um, it's a point and clip conversation set in a call center. It's, it's a pretty short game because it's essentially a single conversation. It's literally a type of call I used to get every single day when I was working for Canada Revenue Agency. And with the choices that you make in the game, you can either lose it politely or lose it spectacularly. There's no real winning the game. Um, I mean, folks may have read about it in the newspaper back in January when my employer caught wind of the game, uh, didn't really seem to agree with it, even though it wasn't really saying anything about CRA. It was just a general call center. But they were offended by it nonetheless and fired my ass, yeah. which got some national media attention. I heard you pretty much on all types of news for a good yeah. couple of weeks. I kind of did like the Howard Stern thing. Like, I'm on TV, I'm on radio, I'm on websites, I'm on video games. Like... People knew. And the thing is, well, I mean, we, we, we've talked about this before, but like, they definitely did not play the game to kind of understand the reason yeah. you let go. But now, because of that, <laughs> the game has got a lot more. Yeah. Press, and a lot more people have heard about it. And it know. definitely, it's gotten a lot more attention because of the story. Which, mm -hmm. I mean, some that's a little unfortunate because I, I, I would love it for it to be about the game itself. Yeah, the which game is like um. It's a very, like, it was one of those first games I've played, and, like, oh, it's not a game that has to have to be, like, fun or, like, really, like, you know, a thing you think of a game video game should be. It was thought-provoking. I'm like, oh, God. Oh, God, this is what he deals with. This is... And you, and you just think of everyone else's mundane job that they have to do to pay the bills, and it's... Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I've, I've done my, my share of mundane jobs. Retail, call centers, fast food, so... I mean, those are experiences we tend to try to escape from. That's usually what video games have been for a long time. But, I mean, video games, just like other forms of media, are, are fast becoming a media where we can share our experiences that aren't always positive, that aren't always power fantasies, that aren't always escapism. They can actually be a tool to help us empathize with someone and can sometimes do that better than other media because you actually have to interact with it. You have to make choices, which invests you in it more than just, like, reading it or watching it. So, I mean, it's really cool the games are doing that now, and, uh, like, I'm just one of them, you know? There's so many good games like Papers, Please, Depression Quest, um, Actual Sunlight, which is actually showing right beside me. Um, and they're taking these great strides in sort of presenting these personal experiences in ways that help people engage and interact with them and really come to know the people who made them and, and what they have to do. A very personal, like, authored experience. Yeah. Is, is there a name you would think to, like, just, I, I, I don't like to put, like, too many labels on it, but, like, just an idea because it's not, it's more of an exper experimental... I, I mean, I think it's more experimental now because we don't see it from the AAA industry as much. I mean, it's getting there. Like, yeah. Popo Yo was a really good example of a personal game. I mean, it was told through metaphor rather yeah. than through simulation. Yeah. You know, you literally took a game about a drunk father and, and made him a literal monster in yeah. a fantasy world. But, you know, by the same token, it's it's getting there. You know, games like Spec Ops The Line and, and Popo Yo are kind of pushing it into the AAA space with these more expressive games. Um, people have called the genre where they see I get this call every day and, and Depression Quest um, empathy games because mm -hmm. they, they promote empathy, but I don't know if that's a really good word for it. I mean, they're, they're kind of like personal experience simulators, yeah. and, and I don't really know if they fit into a genre because they, they do everything so differently in yeah. each game. So. They, yeah, they're just so much different than an actual game that you... I mean, labels or whatever they are. I was just curious if you have thought of one because <laughs> being at the forefront at I, okay. <laughs> yes. No. No. That's that's the title we're gonna get. Okay. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Forefront. Let's do that. <laughs> All right. Anyways, thank you, Dave, for your time, and I'll let you get back to uh, selling the game. Thank you very much. Awesome, awesome sir.